Uh, I'm reading the city paper, and I caught your number, and I caught your ad, and I'm wondering, what is a busker? Now, I did My Fair Lady, and I remember a busker as being a chimney sweep. <laughs> but I don't know. And I've even looked it up in the dictionary. The thing is, is that there's not a, you know, it's not like... It's not a standard documentary where everybody knows what it is. It's not like on a squirrel, you know what I mean? Like everyone's seen a squirrel, they know what the hell a squirrel is. You can do a documentary on a squirrel because people know what it is. People don't necessarily know what busking is. What's wrong? I, I, I'm an unregistered voter, and I was, was hoping to register to vote if I could find out from somebody on the street what busking is. Busking? Busking. busking. Have you heard of busking? What is it? I don't know. Don't know? No. Do you? Have you seen any buskers here today? Bus crews? Not that I've seen, okay. but I'm sure that there are. I know you've seen. You've Use seen it in them. a sentence. Buskers are superheroes. Any ideas on busking? You sure? But they, they, it can entertain you. We're doing a documentary on busking. Do you know what busking is? The way up it's in England, okay. most, mostly in uh, London. During the parade route today, we've seen one person busking. Many supporters of different political views, many people passing out flyers, but only one person actually busking. What was that one person doing? Sounds like of a new sport with buses. Busky. Yeah, any ideas? What do you, what do you think Busky that might reminds be? me of something like babushka. Babushka is something like Russian. What is busky? Whatever you want it to be, sweetie. Oh, all right. <laughs> that one person was... Basically, busking is working in the street without a net. Wait, a busker? busker? I thought you said, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is? Okay, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> no, no. All right. That's all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for your time. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Are you signing people up to vote? I'm trying to get people to vote. I've been trying to register to vote all day. You have been? I have been, but I, 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 I just, I was asking people if they could tell me what busking is, if they could answer what is busking, I, I will sign up to vote. I've been able to find anyone to answer that question. I know. What is it? It's a type of performance art. Okay. And I think that it has to do, it's kind of like poetry, I think. Or it's public performing. It's just going out and performing publicly. I don't know if it's different types. I don't think it's a specific type of art or You not. are correct. Awesome. Right awesome. Yeah. I've been trying to get signed up all day long. Oh, good. That is fantastic. I'm so glad. So what are, you, are you guys... Uh, We're doing a documentary on street performing in, in Pittsburgh. We're doing a big event in October, October 15th, uh, called On Every Corner. So the big event's going to occur in town, in downtown Pittsburgh. It'll take place in Market Square um, during lunchtime, probably from 12 to 2 or somewhere thereabout. And there's going to be a busker on every corner, or relatively on every corner. Ultimately, I'd hope that the event would go smoothly and we wouldn't have weather like this. Uh, it came about, uh, we had, I had an idea of doing, uh, uh, originally recording buskers. We've discovered that buskers do more than just perform music, so we figured we should expand the project a little bit and uh, came up with the documentary idea. Our film is going to document buskers up to that event, them prep, getting ready to prepare for that event, uh, and then performing at that event as well. We had an early lead on an area busker, Sketchmaster Flex. So, we scheduled a meeting at an abandoned house in the north side where he was living. Hey, uh, I, I was there. I must have, uh, I must have not heard you knock. When you, uh, when you guys knock, uh, knock really loud. And, uh, and, uh, uh, cause that's a big house. I might have been, I think I was upstairs. Um, so, sorry about that. Uh, Since we had little to no knowledge of busking ourselves when we began, this project started out as a learning experience for us as well. Unfortunately, the first thing we learn is that it's hard to find buskers in Pittsburgh. Have you ever seen any buskers before? Uh, yeah. In Pittsburgh? Not in Pittsburgh. Okay. We're standing in front of uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, as you can see, and still looking for the elusive Saks man. We've heard all about him. Everyone seems to know who he is. We just can't seem to find him. There is over a truck here. Maybe we can talk to the truck or truck's owner and find out what they know about the Saks Fifth Avenue man and busking. This is downtown Pittsburgh at what, around 11? Monday. It's Labor 1130. Day. Labor Day at 11:30. Beautiful day. You get four of these a year in Pittsburgh. You'd think that there'd be some action downtown, but how can there be action? Because every single place is closed. I was going to go buy some lady gear. I can't even get my lady gear. It's closed. Thus is the uh, the way of the Pittsburgh area. But apparently, well, this is where I saw the you know one guitar busker, and he says usually in the south side, but we didn't see him. 
you done some busking in the city? Oh yeah. Oh a really? Lot, actually, yeah. Have you seen any buskers in Pittsburgh at all in your time? Have you seen a bunch? Yes. Okay. Uh, how do you handle them? Okay. Usually all right. Okay. They don't give you any trouble. Regular citizen. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yep. Appreciate it. This is the Shady Sides Arts Festival behind us, and as you can see, there's a lot of people here. Yet, uh, not too much busking. I had busked or... in Shady Side. Yeah. Not this past, actually last weekend I think it was. It was an arts festival, Ellsworth Avenue Arts Festival. Okay. I was down there for that. I've played uh, at the Art Fest, um, the, um, oh gosh, everyone's gonna hate me for this, um, Three Rivers Art Fest. Wait a second. We were at both of these arts festivals and this is the only guy we saw. So, either buskers are a bunch of liars or we're doing something wrong. At this point we were getting frustrated. We decided it was time to get some help. So we did some research and found an organization called Busk Pittsburgh. We tracked down the two founding members of Busk Pittsburgh, Eric Sloss and Shelley Danko Day, hoping they could shed some light on the state of busking in Pittsburgh. A, a group of artists locally in 1980, specifically Bafflo Bill and Stephanie Flom, worked with Mayor Sophie Masloff in the 80s to create a busking program. Theirs is significantly different from what we did in Busk Pittsburgh three years ago because they actually paid artists. The true art of busking is collecting tips and it's, it's building an audience. We felt that although Busk Pittsburgh did provide some stipends for artists, we felt that the important art and creativity of busking is this relationship where people are giving tips. People, it's, not, it's not begging, it's not uh, vagabonds, it's uh, talented people performing for tips and uh, they're entertaining you as you walk down the street. It's a, it's, it's all over the world and uh, we really need it here in Pittsburgh to enliven our city streets. Uh, one of the things, one of the things that I did was I created a project in Homestead where we are today called the Homestead Sidewalk Art Project with busker extraordinaire Sean McBride. Sean and I worked with the local government here in, in Homestead which is much smaller obviously than the city of Pittsburgh to create a busking project where we had buskers and artists come take to the streets. There was a group of young people who were interested in uh, creating uh, a more vibrant city. Uh, people like Shelley Denko Day and uh, Eric Sloss who uh, were involved in the busking movement. They came to city council and they asked me if I would help them to uh, write some legislation in order to allow it. And I, I put it right back on them and I said no that you have the ability to do so. It was a good civics lesson for them. Um, I got involved with Bus Pittsburgh back in 2002 because I had a friend who is a fabulous singer and he couldn't find a job. And he was complaining about it and I said, well, why don't you go busk? And he said, well, you need a permit or something or something in, in the city of Pittsburgh. You just can't, it's illegal. So I thought, well, no, I'm pretty sure you can do it. So I started looking into it and I ran into Eric Sloss who had done a busk initiative in Homestead and that went pretty well and he had never tried in the city of Pittsburgh so he said well if you help me we work together let's let's make it happen in the city. What we focused on Shelley and I once we got together is the downtown corridor so it was an easy sell for us to talk to city government and explain to them nobody walks your city streets and what we can do is we can create entertainment we can enhance the aesthetics the aesthetic value of the streets by putting performers on the streets and, and that's what was very attractive to the city government. You may have heard it before that um, the two things that you never want to see in life are people making sausage and people making legislation and they were thrown into it and they got to that experience and it was an experience because the first thing that they said was it's our right and we should be able to do it and that was turned back and then they had to go through the process of trying to create legislation looking at different cities and best case examples from all over this world and then they realized that their first point was true. The difference between Pittsburgh and other cities that have ordinances um, is that we didn't create legislation because it's protected under the First Amendment. So we didn't need to reinterpret the, fir the First Amendment, like many cities like Toledo, Ohio, and Seattle, Washington, that created regulations um, to, to have more control on the buskers. What's so significant about Pittsburgh is that we didn't have to do that. Uh, City Councilman Bill Peduto just reiterated the, the value of the First Amendment and, and explained to them what, what this 
what the specific art form is and how it's protected. The database currently has 165, 170 buskers on it, um, in it, um, and I'm constantly getting new buskers emailed to me and, and people contacting me through the website. Um, there was really a need for it in the city. Um, prior to this initiative, you might see there was um, a violin girl in Squirrel Hill, um, a blind guy who sang through the radio in Oakland, and there's a saxophone player in downtown, and um, a one guy who plays the guitar as well downtown. But it really wasn't very, very um, popular to bus. And now you might see a few more buskers. Any place where you have a lot of pedestrian traffic, where there's a lot of crowds gathered for one reason or another, um, Market Square is a good location before their concerts. Oakland is really a, it's a good location for buskers. Um, you have a lot of businesses there that are really interested in having buskers out in front of their establishment. They actually bring people out drinks and stuff. And then we have um, the South Side, which is a really good location too. Uh, lots of traffic over there. Like I said, Station Square, again, private property, but they're requesting buskers, so there's information on their website about getting in there. Uh, oh, the, the baseball and football games. There's no set pitch yet. You go to Key West, you know you can go to Mallory for Sunset Festival, and there it's going to be. You go to Charleston, you, you know you can go to the Old Market House, and, and there are going to be buskers there. Uh, New York, you go to Central Park. So you know in certain areas uh, there are places to work. So when you have a set pitch that's established, uh, then you see a lot more performers there, and you get other performers coming in. We were finally on the right track, so one of our first priorities after finding Buskers was promoting the event. We had submitted a grant proposal to the Sprout Fund, a local organization that offers seed money to aid arts initiatives, only to find out that they would not be awarding anything until September. We decided on October 15th as the date of the On Every Corner event in Market Square, with the expectation that the seed money would come through to help pay for any related taping expenses and advertising. We figured the summer would be the best time to find Buskers, so continued taping despite a very limited budget. In the meantime, we mounted a grassroots advertising campaign consisting of a website, event listings, and flyers. That's it for this Wednesday. See you next Wednesday. <laughs> we also felt that the event would benefit greatly from a featured act. We were lucky enough to meet a group during the Sprout Fund's Hot House fundraiser, the Steel Dragon Lion Dance Team. A lot of people don't understand it. I grew up with it, you know, when I was little we go to Chinatown shopping all the time. Finding people in Pittsburgh that are actually interested in lion dance isn't that easy because most people don't know what it is in the first place. Um, and yet this is very important to me personally, of course, because it's part of my own culture. The thing about lion dance, the, one of the keys is all the elements coming together. Basically the music is the heart of the lion. The dancers are the body, and what we bring down in the Hoi Gong is the spirit of the lion, which should pervade the entire team and which keeps the team as a cohesive unit. I really hope that we're, we're helping bring a very important basic part of Chinese culture to Pittsburgh and make it more better for Asians, Vietnamese, Chinese, you know, all the Southeast Asian cultures that that utilize lion dance because it's not just an art, it performs an important function in our spiritual lives, in our celebrations and that sort of things. And that's really why I did it. Steel Dragon Lion Dance Team. Uh, we have more information about lion dance. What we just did now was a store blessing for um, Whole Foods. Uh, we go in there to scare away all the bad spirits that might be in there. Um, although it's such a great story, I don't know where they really needed it, but um, um, it's traditional Chinese uh, lion dance. If you want more information, yeah. we have information available. Um, we also teach Kung Fu, and um, if you want to come learn lion dance, you know, please see me. We practice twice a week. Thank you. After taking Shelley's advice, we traveled to areas like the South Side, the Strip District, and Station Square, and found a variety of buskers. Our search continued to go well throughout the summer and into the fall, all the way up to the On Every Corner event. How long have you been doing the 
About 10 years. About 10 years? I joined him a couple of years ago. Okay. And what's your main? You do the fire eating? The fire, uh, balloons. Dance. Storytelling, magic. So if I so if I asked you like to define what is busking, how would you how would you define it? Uh, self promotion, self promotion. As far as and and in a way to uh, provide for yourself, you know. I started in Seattle. I was living there, and I would go, I would wake up in the morning, go up the street, and um, uh, uh, play out in front of the Safeway. And uh, basically, I just started out making about 30 bucks a day, playing a small uh, Egyptian um, inlaid drum, it's a beautiful drum. And uh, that was my first real exposure to music. I carried pockets full of, pockets full of like harmonicas and, and just different dinger things and stuff like that, you know? And I'll go and I'll, to, to play, I'll start playing a drum or something so people start to notice that somebody's playing music. Then I'll look around for people that want to play, like I'll give them a harmonica or I'll give them something. And then we all start to play together. So it, it becomes not just me playing, but us playing, and then it, you know, so I, I basically I'm like, um, I'm kind of, I kind of like travel around and uh, instead of looking for instruments when I do a show, I look for people to do a show. I think, you know, instead of being like the audience performer, it becomes, it becomes like, uh, I'll say it like this, like someone taught me how to play the drums. When they said to play the drums, it's like your heartbeat. You feel it in your chest, boom, 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 boom. boom. When you get that rhythm, you got every rhythm that you could ever want to play, and then you just you just go out there and you play it. And as people like can express themselves with with music, then, then they they can take that heartbeat and that rhythm and that love, and they can put it in their own lives, and they can spread it out like 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 magic, like wildfire. It just spreads. I bust in Boston when I was about 19. I'm now 20. Okay, nice. <laughs> same, same instrument? No, same instrument. Actually, this baby was my, my mom gave it to me when I was 12. Mm. And it's a wonderful instrument. It's called Yasha Lee, after Yasha Heifetz. And okay. Lee's my mom's name. come from the concept of Americana as music that should be preserved and that's where I try to get my source materials from all kinds of crazy old uh, you know, Appalachian hillbillies and, and you know Florida swamp dwellers and, and just like that you know the bayou people anything that speaks to me of Americana is something that I try to play and everybody wants to I've had people ask me to give them lessons I don't know anything self taught All I do is play whatever I can figure out. You smell like catfish and turtles and frogs. You smell like muskrats and wet hunting dogs. The skeeters we got here, they're jumbo in size. They can't get to us because of the flies. We're variety artists, so we're not musicians. <laughs> How about in the city? I mean, it's just where you normally hang during the games, but what about on non-game days? Do you have any specific places you go? Sacks, Fifth Avenue, the cultural, cultural uh, 
Okay, well, cool. We wondered if you were the sax man. We've been, we've been looking for you for yeah. a while. We, we spent a lot of hours, a lot of time, not only developing the skill sets we use, but also developing the performances and, and what you see. We're we're real heavy on the safety aspects as far as the as far as the danger acts go, and uh, it takes about four to six months of book work before I'll even let you pick up a torch, and let alone a torch that's lit. I started singing when I was 18. I always had a desire to sing when I was a younger girl, but I never could. And okay. as I got older, I started taking voice lessons. Um, I started with the classics. Um, I used to sing, Ave Marie. And I wasn't really into the opera. My heart has always been in the gospels. I was born in 1926, I'm mm. 78 years old, and uh, I'm retired. What, oh, what did you used to do? Huh? What are you, what are you retired from? What, what, what trade? Uh, well, in the steel mill. Mm. Yeah, okay. I get Social Security, and then I get this here, and this helps me out. I don't get much Social Security. Mm. Then I got a, a little job, uh, janitor job, mm. and okay. then I do this, so I'm okay. pretty good shape. This is good stuff. A lot yeah. of fun, right? Fun Maybe I might make a hit someday, I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm the ghetto of the clown. Four schools and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent and new nation, conceded a dedication to the proposition that we are not equal, so you don't get the same as I get. You gotta learn how to read, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never actually done it for tips before. Uh, I have uh, performed for fun just uh, out in the open. Um, because it's such a recent thing, I haven't thought about it much in terms of uh, a money-making tool. Juggling is all about dropping and picking it right back up. If you don't care, the audience won't care. I'm, I'm not busking. I was okay. actually hired by my not hired on time, but do you do, do you do busking? I've super performed, yeah, all over. Oh, cool, man, cool. What's it going to be here? I don't know. You guys do. What is it? <laughs> How about the firehouse poker? Sounds great. That sounds wonderful. We won't bring the firehouse on over here, though. The only time I've really busted in Pittsburgh has been in the three weeks I Okay. And that is, it's like, it's Eden for Muslims. Right, right. It's like, people are happy, they saw a show for free. Right. And uh, they're getting, yeah, they're just in good spirits. And then you, usually there's so many people that they don't even get to see the band necessarily. So then having a street performance just like, cool, brings to cool. the crowd you either want to do a lot of body tricks meaning okay audiences can tell I'm putting balls on my head they can also tell I'm catching balls on my neck mm -hmm. they can't necessarily tell the difference between this right and this you know mm -hmm. to the uneducated audience which is cool so you want to do as much stuff as they like sometimes it may not be the most difficult stuff but like Kicking it off a shoe, they can, you know, they know what that is. Going hacky sack trick, that's you know. But if you say you're doing it behind your back, you know, they can tell you're throwing it behind your back. And that's cool with them. Um, the box, they love that one. It's a very right angle. How do you, have you ever thought of teaching classes? I mean, to yourself? Like uh, I have, and I'd like to at my university. Uh, as a part of the community class program. I got a violin, but I'm, that's a rough son of a gun. I'm taking it. You know, I, go, oh, that's a tough I got to get that, and I have to go through things. Excellent. Excellent. Are you are you self-taught? Did someone else show you how to do it? No, I did. did I, I taught myself. Okay. I don't read notes or nothing. I just in my head. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, I'm and, here and every show. Okay. Any, anytime you're on the video, you just come by. Excellent. Unless I'm sick. One, one show, and I never showed up, I was sick. Okay. I'll be here next time. But this day. is your spot, right? This is the yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, this is my spot. All right. Yeah. Guys Excellent. do pretty good, too. Okay. Gotcha. Well, how long have you been playing? How about that? Uh, 25 years. 25 years? As far as the saxophone. Mm -hmm. that, that's your main, your main yeah, instrument? The saxophone. Well, I've been playing for the best of 13 years. Okay. You know, but I've been busking only for, for two years. Okay. From Pittsburgh area? And right here in okay. the metropolitan area, right here on the strip. Okay. Like, what I'm exchanging to my listening audience is basically jazz. Uh, and how, how, you've been busking how long in, in Pittsburgh? Six years in Pittsburgh? About six years okay. in Pittsburgh. Primarily yeah. the Strip? In the Strip. I started as an artist. I used to sell my artwork down here. And, um, and then this took over. Well, since I was about maybe 14 years old. I'm 25 now. Okay. And where was this? I started out on the streets of Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Mostly okay. down in Oakland. I was just playing outside practicing in, in this park in Orlando, Florida. And, you know, sometimes I close my eyes when I play. And I looked up and there was money in my case. I'm like, wait, what's this? There's this couple there sitting there listening to me practice. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. Um, but I actually just, a buddy of mine plays flute down here sometimes. And I'd see him around. And he had all, he's, he's just making money. I'm like, well, I could be practicing at home. Or I could come out here a couple days and, you know, and practice basically on the street and make some money. But I like to take requests. I like to, you know, if somebody, some kids are walking by, I play Sesame Street or. Barney and stuff they can relate to. There's a obviously people wearing Steelers gear. Mm -hmm. The fight songs are cool. There's a guy that came by last week. He had a New York, uh, Notre Dame hat on or something, so I put a Notre Dame fight on the fight song. Okay. It, you know, so you just it's challenging. It just you know I try to when I practice, just try to come up with songs and just totally be able to play a song without rehearsing it. Mm -hmm. So this is the same thing, but there's a little more pressure because you don't want to be cracking notes in front of people. And it's interesting because in Pittsburgh there's a lot of venues, jazz venues. There aren't too many venues for jazz in town right now. Okay. Have, have you done any busking here in the city ever? No, we uh, haven't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've done other types of shows throughout the, uh, the time we've been involved in Magic, but we haven't really gone out there. How long did you stay in Oakland busking? Um, several years, and then um, I graduated high school. I was 18 years old, and then um, that's when I started playing with Nate Fitzgerald. And uh, okay. we kind of we kind of went down to Ocean City, Maryland, started busking on the on the boardwalks down there. I started this summer to make rent at the beginning of the summer because I was having some problems financially for a while. And after that, it was just so much fun the first time I went out that I've been doing it pretty much every weekend this summer since then out on Carson here. And, you know, it's just a lot of fun to do. You get to meet a lot of new people each night, and it's, it's basically just a blast. I was out here for four hours the one night straight, and I didn't really just until I broke all my strings, pretty much. It's usually how it goes, you know, I'll play and then I'll break some strings and just call it a night. I'm actually a piano player, but out here I can't really do that. So I just play guitar. This is a melodica. That's similar to a, you know, a harmonica in a lot of ways, but it's got a cool, um, two octaves on here. I've been doing this for years, So they, man. they give you a badge so that they, you don't get harassed there? or That's my you? fake badge. Oh, OK. <laughs> a teddy bear help, a teddy bear girl. Doing teddy bear stuff. OK. That's my Couple musician times. friend. Come back here, boy! Hey, this is hey. my musician friend. Uh, how long have you been uh, doing I've been the busking? Huh? How long have you been doing the performing in the street stuff? Oh, uh, about 25 years. Hi, right Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, white people! I 
I started uh, about 11 years ago, um, it be 12 years ago, 92. I was working as a teacher in the Czech Republic and I was on my summer holiday, on summer break. And I got through Switzerland and Austria, I got to about Holland when I completely ran out of money. I had about $20 to get all the way back to Prague. And so I borrowed a friend's guitar. I had been playing at campfires and stuff for a long time, but I never really asked for money. It was like a big hurdle to cross. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just embarrassed to do it and everything else, but desperation uh, changed my mind. Borrowed a guitar, went out, was in Delft, Holland, and played for just a couple hours, made about uh, 90 guilder, like 60 bucks, mm -hmm. and I was hooked. They had an event here on Friday nights for several years called M Squared. And I was down here for a lot of years. This is where I got my initial feet wet busking. And that's where I set up, was right under that lamppost. Did you come across any uh, other busking regulars? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I played once with Bill Dorsey down down in Oakland. Okay, describe Bill Dorsey for us. Oh, he's a great singer. He's a, he's a very spiritual man. Oh my, I've been singing since I was four years old. Yeah. That was uh, 51 years ago. My mother taught me how to sing. The Lord gave me the voice. I, I once was lost, once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I spiritually see. That's why thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh huh. So uh, how long have you been? performing out here in Oakland? Well, I've been doing that for off and on, not every day, but uh, maybe 25 years off and on because I had to take care of my son, Darnell. I have a beat. Here you go. Ready, come. Thank you. May God bless you financially with a billion fold. Fourth grace that broke. We were very happy with the way things were going. However, our attention was quickly drawn back to the Marcus Square event by the news we were not awarded the Sprout Seed money. Although this obviously wasn't good news for us, it did inspire us to pose an interesting question about the financial benefits of busking to the performers on the street. Yeah, well a lot of times in clubs they give you a standard fee to come in and play, and when you have to do it on the street, you only get paid if people like you. bucks an hour, this is the most underrated job ever. So we're like five hours an hour if you can play decent. That shouldn't be hard to get if people aren't <laughs> trying to be, you know, hoarders, you know, <laughs> holding on to everything, you know. You spend, you spend uh, extra 69 cent on a, to supersize it, but you're scared to like, you know, give somebody a quarter for uh, all the skills and art that they've learned, you know, from the time that they were in elementary school learning the violin how to play the drum, the saxophone, the trumpet. The best places that I've found, I've made $50 in an hour in the south side. I've made more money out here than I know some guys. I don't play a lot in the clubs, but I've made more money in the street playing in a couple hours, and I know some guys may, I know what they make in the clubs, and it's, it's not good. And I've made double, triple that just playing on the street some days. It's a pretty good location you got here. Well, on the bridge, you know? I came on this same bridge about, about a year ago from today. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say to the date, but I mean, it had to be close. And I played standing up on the buttress of the bridge, way down over where it was back, you know, into the town mm -hmm. side, with a guitar open. And I, I worked and I struggled and I figured out how to play um, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. I figured that out after 45 minutes or so. <laughs> And I played it for about two hours and nobody was responding. And I looked over and the PNC Park is dark. And Heinz Field is all lit up. They're playing football and I'm playing a baseball <laughs> song, you know? That, that, there's a big hole in my thing here. Man. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> How am I supposed to play it like this? Help me! Strings are a dollar a piece. 
I broke one. To me, this is a venue to get it out there. You know? But I could have made money. I knew the Steeler fight song. I just didn't know it was a Steeler game. I'm going pirates. You know? you know, it's not necessarily something you can make any money at, but, you know, just extra cash. Since I'm from Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. now I don't know if I speak for other buskers like this, but <laughs> since this is my hometown, I'm not as go get them. Like, I just do it when we feel, like, inspired mm -hmm. or there's a festival. If the Steelers are playing and, you know, they were in a championship game a couple years ago, so I went up there and started blasting my horn up <laughs> on Mount Washington. You know, I'm not there to make money and stuff it's more when I was traveling when you're you know you're low on funds you don't really know anybody it's not that I'd be embarrassed if somebody from my oh hi Aunt Marge or something right, right. but you know in your own hometown it's like no you could your job at Westinghouse didn't work out huh you know oh, this is what I'm doing you know but I mean it's like it's just you know I just do it when it when the kind of spirit hits it you know when you go away then you come back you and they treat you pretty good or if you get a uh, little bit of money when you go in other states or other cities and you come back to Pittsburgh and you get, you know, a decent amount and you figure out that Pittsburgh fans are uh, do you pretty good. It's a lot of educating going on, you know, letting people know this, we are professional artists and this is our job. So, so no, we, we have come across some busters that have day jobs, but this is your full-time gig? Yeah, this is what we do for a living. Although some of the buskers could not relate to our financial troubles, there was one concern we all shared. How does uh, weather affect the busking scene? Incredibly. It's very, very much a seasonal thing. Uh, in the spring, it's incredible. People are so receptive. They're so glad to get out of their houses. They're, they feel so free and, and they just want to run out there. And people, they're talking to them, they're like, oh yeah, this is great, you know, I love this. You know, this is, this is fun, this is great. If it's raining, not only, you know, are you standing out there in the rain, but there's nobody out there either. Yeah. Although, so we've been rained out a couple of times this summer. Although some of our rough. best nights have been days when it's rained early and we've hung it out till the after the rain stopped and then worked afterwards and we've gotten some of our best hats that way. Even though it had been surprisingly pleasant for the majority of the time we were taping, the thought of rain during the On Every Corner event was still on our minds. We also needed to find out if we can afford to hold it without backing from Sprout. We headed to the city county building to speak with Nadine. I may, I may have to, you may have to get down a floor and we go around. So we're going to have to go through security on the other end. Okay. So you're going to have to get down and use the, use the uh, Grand Street elevator. All right. Thank you. All right. We were denied entrance through that way, but uh, we'll find this Nadine if it's the last thing we do. It was a pleasant you. surprise to find out the hardest part of dealing with the city was navigating our way through the city county building. It appeared that Eric Sloss and Shelley Danko Day's hard work had paid off for us, saving us a need to acquire any sort of permit. We still had to speak with the downtown partnership about the stage area in Market Square. But to this point, it looked like our expenses for the event could be limited to only gas and parking. Although the nature of busking made planning this event financially possible, it does unfortunately seem to be the greatest obstacle that faces buskers in Pittsburgh. As people walk by, they, do they kind of get what you're doing? Do they know? Do they stop and listen at so, all? So-so, so-so. Okay. It, it, sometimes they associate it with Pan Am. And I just never really did, that, did this here in Pittsburgh because it really 
Pittsburgh just didn't quite get that. It's not just here, and I wouldn't say it's ignorance. It's, it's just a cultural filter. I get it in Fort Lauderdale. I get it in Key West. I get it in New York. We get it, in, I mean, everywhere we work, whether it's busking or a Renaissance Fair or a Fringe Festival, we get that. So what's your real job? And, and I, I think it's really that most people can't understand that you can make a living doing this. You can tell by the way a person's dressed, if they're clean, if they're professional, mm -hmm. if they're well shaved, uh, if their instruments look good, you know, whether, you know, I mean, if I'm just here to play two chords just so I can get money to go to a bar, you can <laughs> tell the difference immediately. They think, I don't know, I get the impression that they feel I'm a homeless bum who uh, shouldn't be supported. <laughs> <laughs> you filming it? So, you know, you play your heart out and you don't get anything. You know, it's like you, it's a reciprocal. You want, you, you want to give a good deal, give a good performance, or do the songs well, or whatever, or originally, or whatever, or strike some chord with people, but you expect to get something out of it, you know? And, I mean, there's only a small percentage of people that tip anyway. Well, I've seen people sort of, they look, they look sideways at buskers right now. So are you a mime or are you just a musician? I'm just a musician. I'm, you know, Why do you paint your face for me? I don't know. No, I, I mean, I'm not judging. No, no, it's cool, man. It's cool. Uh, you know, I don't know. Just for like a, a character, more or less, you know. Sort of an act. I'm with it. Yeah, I want to start doing mime stuff, though. I'm not... I don't want to just. A creepy yeah, sort of a well, thing to go into. I don't want to just jump into it either because I don't want to do a disservice because I'm not. You know. People get moms get pissed off. If you fuck yeah, them. dude. They'll fuck, fuck you up. <laughs> Gotten harassed a couple times, but it just by mainly by single officers, you know, that say you're you're giving me a headache. I I I find that, that suppression plus repression equals depression. We were actually in the, over there in the corner and the guy was like, oh, you gotta get out of here or whatever. But, um, so we just went across the street and, you know, it's funny because people saw us breaking down and were like, hey, you guys aren't done. We're like, well, this guy's kicking us out. Yeah. But it's just, you just move and it's not a big deal. Like, I've never had a problem. I've not even heard of anybody having a problem with this at all, like, as far as the police or anything. Uh, actually, we have been arrested yeah. while busking. Really? Yeah, okay. Have, Where was this? In Ocean, Ocean City, City, Maryland, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we were playing for a crowd of people that happened to have open containers of alcohol on the boardwalk, which is illegal, mm -hmm. and we were all taken to jail with and, our guitars. And we had, we were stopped several times by the police for playing too loud acoustically. Too loud acoustically? Yeah, yeah. loud. Yeah. Acoustically. They claimed they could hear us blocks and blocks, blocks away. Blocks and blocks away, and people and stomping. people stomping their feet, yeah. And, uh, and screaming. And, and, yeah. It was a good time, though. Oh, I've been shoved off many places, and it's mm -hmm. crazy, because I've played for amazing people. And yet, and I understand the businesses because they don't want anything threatening. It's hard enough to have a business. Mm -hmm. So if they see somebody and they think, oh my God, you know, she plays a sour note. <laughs> we must, might just lose that thousand dollar sale. You know, and I do that also at galleries when I'm playing for galleries. I think, geez, you know, it's sort of a responsibility. Mm -hmm. They're looking at the painting and you walk up and go, eh! and they go, oh, that's okay, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go buy some, <laughs> a sandwich. <laughs> Forget about that face. The diversity of people that stop to respond, everything from kids to old people to uh, things that... I play a lot of Middle Eastern music and I've had people cry up in Squirrel Hill, people who have been through atrocities that you wouldn't believe. I thought I was like enjoying my sort of Hebrew sound, but I didn't realize it sounded like the music on Schindler's List. Once a day, I'm happy. I don't even know if I don't, I'm happy. Because I People are just starting to open their eyes to the idea of having street performers. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback. People come up to us and say, oh, you're adding, you're adding so much to this experience of being here. And they really like the idea. Um, but there's also still another connotation that, you know, 
that equates busking with panhandling. And here I haven't heard of a busker making more than maybe um, $30 in a day. However, the homeless in Oakland make $100 a day. And they're still out there because you keep giving them money. You're encouraging that activity. So you can have them or you can have talented people. The main obstacle to overcome with Bus Pittsburgh, introducing busking to Pittsburgh, is to let people know that the buskers aren't homeless. They're not desperate. They're just talented people and they're helping to enliven our city streets. And we need them. And we need to say at least, you know, give them a thumbs up when you walk by. Throw in a dollar if you can. But at least realize that they're there entertaining you. general audience has been pretty receptive to, oh, to yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. These guys love it. <laughs> they all want to be rock stars. <laughs> We're not panhandlers. Okay. <laughs> when you see this little bucket with our bus Pittsburgh sticker, we're not panhandlers. And uh, we're not out here in the street. We do have homes. We have kids. We're married. This is just something we do to get our careers a uh, jump start. Yeah, so let those people know that busking, we're not begging. We're, we're not out here begging. We're out here performing. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you want to pay us, go ahead. But if you don't, don't. And we like to try to give you. You're welcome. Thank you. People get what you were doing? Yeah, actually, Nate, uh, okay. in fact, one time we were down in the South Side, mm -hmm. one of the few times that we ever went down there, and Nate was with me that day. We were down there playing, and we actually stopped traffic down on the South Side on East Carson Street. And uh, people, you know, were sitting there and listening. But I've never had any any problems. I, in fact, I, I think of the opposite. I think people, when you hear our, we have a very family-oriented sound, mm -hmm. and I think they've been very supportive and like, you know, you know like that the crowds are happy kind of stuff. Up to this point, we were unable to find any specific issue that impacted every busker. Some of them made money, some of them didn't. Some of them were perceived as panhandlers, some of them weren't. The only issue that did seem to affect everyone, no matter what, is Pittsburgh's inconsistent foot traffic. Any given lunchtime, I generally try to hit in there lunchtime, 11.30ish. Okay. Yeah. Um, usually later in the week is, is, is generally better, you know. But, I mean, it's odd. I've gone down there for, you know, in the first half hour, made 20 bucks, and then sat there for two hours and made two bucks. You know, you have to try to pick areas where there's good foot traffic. Right. You know, where there's right. a lot of people on the strip on Saturdays, mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even you know, early Sunday is cool. You might get me in the morning when people going to work. Okay. You get people working from 6 to 2. Okay. 7 to 3. Okay. 8 to 4. <laughs> so, okay. they have to get up about like maybe 4.30 on their way to work, find you somewhere to be. Okay. You know, we're traffic is coming, you know. It's pretty much Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Thursdays because the stores stay open. Did you try out any other areas like South Side or downtown at all? Not and much. The, okay. I did the South Side a few times, but Oakland seemed to be the place where where the most people gave the most money. In other cities there's a lot of places where you'll get more people walking by than here. Here it's like it's hard to find a good spot and it seems like, you know, one time on the weekend you might find a couple good hours or something like that. Other cities it seems like on the boardwalk you could be out there all day, you know? And it's just gonna keep being new people walking by the whole time. Ocean City versus Pittsburgh. Well, there's what just you people, think? you know, in Maryland all the time along the boardwalk. And it's, uh, you know, a lot of people, thousands of people every day. So that's obviously much better. You can go out and spend two hours and make nothing. And you can go out and spend two hours and just look at the money in the hat and going, we do yeah. what for a living? Okay. Repeat after me. Up here. Repeat after me. Yeah? Sure. You betcha. All together now. Yeah, sure. You betcha. Okay, you pass the test. You're a Viking. Although a number of buskers could figure out when and where are good times to busk, the very fact that there were only certain times and certain places that you could find large numbers of people walking in Pittsburgh seemed to be the reason busking wasn't more popular or well known. 
If you don't shop in the Strip District or hang out in the Southside, Station Square, or Squirrel Hill on the weekends, the chances of you coming across the busker are slim. Since most city workers live in the suburbs and vacate town the second the workday is done, there's no reason to busk any other time because the city streets are empty. This is also the reason that lunchtime seemed to be the best time to plan an event downtown because there would still be people there. We had one final stop to absolutely confirm that on every corner was going to happen. The Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership. Hi guys. Hi. How are you? I'm Jonathan. Jonathan, hi. Aaron Bernard, nice to meet you. Aaron? Yeah, and there's Jerry Tonti. Jerry, Jerry. Hey, good to meet you. So you guys are... Yes, yeah, we're going to run this event. Yeah. Um, it, it's a busking event. Um, I think so. I saw the application um, that went to Nadine. I think she sent me a copy of that. Okay, cool, um, cool. Looks good. But this, and you're doing this on a Friday or a Saturday? It's a Friday. It's, it's Friday. actually lunchtime. So like 11 a.m. to like 2 ish, yeah. and then we can definitely, you know, wrap things up. Okay. Um, our volunteer end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't anticipate you know too much. I mean, the, the, the times that we have the most trash are when um, you know vendors actually come in and set up, and you, you know you right. you have um, you know a hot dog vendor, you've got um, you know, beer and beer cups and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That's right. You know, right. All over the place. So if people are just going to existing restaurants and so forth. There. You know, th there still will be a little extra because, you know, they're more Instead people. of eating inside, they might hang out. And right, yeah. right. So I wouldn't expect it to be a big problem. But if you could just, you know, plan to have, have some people, you know, pay sure. attention to that and picking up some of the excess trash, that would be a big help. That's not a problem at all. Great. Well, Great for your event. Thank you so much. I and appreciate it's, it. It's the, um, Thank you very which day? 15th. 15th. Yeah. When yeah. I record. So maybe I'll get a chance. I'm usually out and about, you know, once or twice during the course of a day anyway. Oh, just man. Around, so. That'd be great. We'll, we'll look for you. Thank you so much. Okay, good luck. Thank you. See you later. It was great to finally have the On Every Corner event confirmed. We continued with our flyer campaign and checked in with the progress of the Lion Dance team. Everybody in Lion Dance is a Kung Fu person, so they understand the discipline. Um, and they understand that this is an extension of the culture that they're inheriting by, by becoming martial artists, by becoming Kung Fu um, practitioners. I, I think we've made some pretty good progress. I've been working on um, developing the fundamentals of the team too, both their gong fu um, that is required for lion dance as well as the lion dance itself. And also their training, their, their basic conditioning um, to make them stronger, more flexible. Those types of things that we need to do to um, progress and become a better and better lion dance team. Generally, they give 110%. I think that they work really hard. I'm pretty happy with the way it's going, I, I, as far as their progress goes. Sometimes I wish we could go a little bit further, but right now we can only meet twice a week. And so you only have so much time to progress, even if our practices are two and two and a half hours. Oranges are good luck because they're orange, and gold is um, a good luck color. Red and gold are good luck colors in Chinese. And so, in, in, this, in that case, um, this is a real traditional one for like produce vendors um, because it's natural. And so each orange represents a season. And in that one, what you do is the line goes down and he eats the orange and he just takes it. And then what he leaves is he, he, he peels the orange and, it, and leaves it and it looks like a lotus flower. It's got eight petals. And then he takes the flesh, the orange or tangerine or whatever, you can use tangerines too, that's actually more common. Mm -hmm. And then you give it to um, the person who's asked for it to perform, you know, for their store. And you do that for each one. Okay, so what are you going to do? You come up here, you do the first approach, come down like this, then you come around, and when you, and when you give it, you can, you can circle around a little bit each time you want. Or you can just go directly to the owner. Okay, to the person who sponsors in lion dance. And then, you know how you like to have it up. You can, you know, look at the other people and then come back and do the next orange. Instead of having, if you can like use your shoulders to kind of manipulate the head while you're, while you're doing that, so it looks like, you know what I mean? 
because that's kind of how it lines eat. My team make, makes me so proud. I, 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 I seriously, I, I'm really proud of them. I, they, they, they just suddenly, whoosh, you know, really come together. It's, it's just so great to watch as a coach. With everything else going great, we were dealt a sobering reminder about our final concern in the form of Hurricane Ivan. The historic storm occurred on our original date for On Every Corner, and the after effects were visible the next day. We're saying, we're saying things about Ivan that we say in the winter, you know, like, <laughs> we don't need this, you know. Oh well, yeah, it was crazy last yeah, it was, night. It was, it was crazy, like, people were almost floating, floating around. Yeah. Buskers, somehow, a people in boosting your spirit when weather is adverse. You know, when the weather's rather. So you think they should be out more in days? I think I think they should because they could communicate a happy feeling to make people forget what happened last night with the flooding and you know the record breaking flood right, levels. Yeah. You know, things like that. With time running short we set out to inform the local businesses of Market Square about our event. Now, okay. well, we're having an event uh, on the 15th on Friday in Market Square. We're doing a documentary film. Okay, we're, doing, we're going to be doing an event uh, coming on October 15th here in the square. Now, on every corner. Yeah, yeah. doing the lunch time from 11 to, 11 to 3. We some fire eaters, magicians, things like that. Um, street performers on all the corners. You can't get rid of all these guys, but you, you can't get rid of them. Okay, so we're going to try to have a, a busker on every corner performing the 15th. A what? And we just wanted to, you know, let the business owners know what, what day of the week is it? It's a, it's a Friday. We're going to try to hit the lunch crowd between 11 and 3. Okay. I mean, we're not going to close off any sidewalks in the street, so it'll be full, full, full closeout. We'll be shooting all, uh, everything outside. Yeah, that's great. Um, and see some yeah. buskers and um, kind of sit with some entertainment. So this is kind of the yeah, launching pad for it. Yeah, we have actually people that are afraid to come in. They will not. They, they won't come to the square. They're afraid. Right. It's right. a shame. We have nice restaurants. Yeah. Nice bar. So some of the businesses are hanging flyers in their windows where you can take them to pass out with one of them if you'd be interested. Can I take some? Thanks. Oh, yeah, we can post this up. Is oh, that really? Good to know? Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. What do you play? I play guitar. Oh, awesome, man. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, just be street entertainment. There's some magicians, some fire eaters, yeah. some line dancers, and some right. entertainment. Okay. Well, I like this stuff. Good. Okay, cool, man. All right, fellas. Thank you so Thank much. You. I really appreciate, appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate you doing it. What do you guys taste these? <laughs> People have been asking for these since 4th of July. No kidding. It's like a seasonal cookie. What right. do you taste it? Cool. Yeah. Can it improve your document? One for each one of you guys. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. Anybody clean up the square, I appreciate it. Our final night of posting flyers went well, and all that was left to do was wait. In the meantime, we caught up with a couple of buskers one final time. You know, I had a really good time with this uh, because I met a lot of people that I wouldn't normally have met. I met a lot of just characters, you know, a lot of people that, that, that took my music to, like, like interesting, just interesting levels, you know, it made me feel so good. Um, what what I didn't like about it was that I had I really, really wanted to give people something. When 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 they were when they would you know they would throw change in, in a box, you know, or a guitar case or whatever, um, I wanted to give them a tape or some you know C D or something like that. Uh, this uh, two months ago I, I worked in the studio and uh, I managed to, to, to run, for, for a short amount of time, I managed to run the entire studio on solar power in the house. And uh, I have um, uh, about eight hours of music that I recorded through, through the studio. And then I have another 10 hours of music that I recorded on the sidewalk. I've got one tape that I've, I've put out, and what I've been doing is putting it in Ziploc bags and stapling it up in random places. And so that like people walking down the street, you know, they, they you know they see graffiti, they see tags, you know, but you know they see a tape hanging there in a Ziploc <laughs> bag, and they're like, hmm, and they'll pick it up. It's a really good tape. It's really good, and, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm working on taking that to CD to put it on a CD. Uh, I've got uh, about 40 hours or so of studio experience, like mastering music in, in actual recording studios. So I'm going to take try to take that to that next level. It's like it's like it feels so good to uh, to have to, to have given out a hundred, five hundred, thousand CDs, whatever, 
you know, and and to um, and to uh, hear be walking down the street and hear your music playing in the cars, it's passing. It's it's amazing. It's like it's like there's no feeling like it in the world. You know, it's like yeah, that's me. You know, <laughs> like some of the things that I'm looking forward to doing are um, just just getting getting the CD released, mm -hmm. getting this demo out. Uh, the um, the, the biggest the, the biggest thing for me is, is going to be uh, getting um, getting my uh, getting myself into a, a, into a, a situation where I start meeting the people that I need to meet. A lot of times when I was walking just by myself and I'd still have my guitar, you know, because I mean, a lot of times you know I'd go off with girls or I'd be off with girls and I'm going back to meet up with him, you know, because we're right. off with girls, <laughs> right? Uh, Right. A, a lot of times I'd just be walking and people would stop me and say, hey, play us a song. And I'd try to be like, well, I just got a bass. They'd be like, oh, I don't care. Just play the song anyway. And uh, I would, I'd play something. This is a song I wrote called Willie, The Great Willie Price. Well, Willie Price could sing the blues like no other man can. He was born and raised in this sad land without a nickel in his hand. One day the government said that they were stealing his house away. So he turned to hustling, dope and smack and drinking for that day. But will we play that old guitar and sing a song of pain? And no, you're not the only man whose dreams drown in the brain. You were never given a chance in this world, no chance except to die. Yeah, it's probably the song we've played on the street the most amount of times. Do you still bust now? I actually haven't in a long time because we put this band together, you know, with our drummer Jordan McMillan, and uh, we, we pretty much just play clubs and bigger venues now. <laughs> proud of, you know, and uh, it's what we've been doing, and, you know, I, 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 gotta, I gotta thank, that's where it started, you know, yeah, cool. you know, it was cool. on the streets, you know, that's where, it, that's where it started and that's where it's always gonna end. Around midweek it was not looking good. Rain was forecast for the entire day. We had no way to contact a number of the buskers and as it grew later into the fall the chances of good weather became slim. At that point there was no alternative but to continue on as planned. The Lion Dance team had a final practice before the event, so we stopped in to see how things stood with them. You know, I, I, this team has gotten close. We know each other, and I, I think I think that we can really make progress. I'm hoping to bring more more people on now that we've got a core and do more performances. And then specifically about the event, is the weather going to have much of an impact on you guys? Or? This weather will be kind of cool, I yeah, think, yeah. but it won't be that cool. It will, well, they'll live. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, I, to be honest with you, I expect this from them. You know, I expect them to do it because A, 50 isn't that cold. B, the costume is, you know, the line itself is pretty warm. And C, they are martial artists. Being a martial artist requires dealing with whatever kind of adver adversity comes up. And it doesn't even have to be a fight. Um, you know, mar martial arts is training your mind. Line dance is training your mind, it's learning to work with each other, whatever. You know, and you, when you do a line dance, you have to do it in whatever environment you're given. A little rain's not going to... A little rain's not going to... The only thing a little rain might do is make our line all wet and then we'll have to clean it up. You know, and you know, we only have one line where we don't have a lot of money. So we have to take, you know, good care of it. Here we are. We're here. Yeah, okay. It's not really raining well, right now. It's not really sunny, but not really raining. There's their sun. That's that's a good sign, Jared. It's it a good is. sign. Very good sign. I'm gonna go get more sugar for my tea. Well, you enjoy that. But hopefully, if the weather holds, we'll be all right. Um, we've had every every Friday since June, all but one have been sunny. At the same time, our first choice was September 17th. 
It, uh, it, it September seventeenth, and then but then we it's the twenty first also, wasn't it? That second uh, weekend. Seventeenth. Are you sure? Yeah. What happened on the seventeenth? Uh, the flood. Oh, the hurricane. Ah, all right. Well, there we go. So the only the only two days that we picked, we had rain. So that's that's good enough. But we'll see. Hopefully it'll, yeah, it'll hold. Yeah, it's definitely not flooding today. Hopefully. Yeah, it could it could have been a lot worse. So I think we'll be okay. As long as the busters show up, we're fine. There is hope. The skies are beginning to clear. Officially, I get some more nice out. At what time is it? We got uh, 15 until the busters start pouring, pouring in, and hopefully. We got sunshine. The steel drum player showed up early, but without his drum. But he said he might come back. Other than that, we had nothing. All right, we have uh, one minute to 11. How many buskers do we have? We have. Um, zero buskers currently. However, the steel drummer said that he would come back with his drum and um, hopefully he'll, he'll be here. We've had verbal confirmation from uh, 25 to 30 buskers. Now, on the day, because of the rain, I did talk to several of them, so they should be coming down shortly. Hey, no way! I no way! No way! No way! All right, voice mailbox not set up yet, so <laughs> I guess I guess we'll have to just hope they show up then. That great Titanic boat begun to reel and rock. People on board the new crowd because they was afraid to die. We said when that great ship went down. Oh, so sad ship went down. Oh, and it said when that great ship went down to the bottom of the sea. Just when we were really starting to worry, our first busker arrived. Really? You're the first two around? Yeah. Well, I was going to come down even earlier, but because of the rain, I, w I was certain, mm, maybe yeah. I ain't even going to go. I know, but hey, man, it's clearing up for us, looks like, eh? Hey? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking I was going to go up under one of those uh, awnings. By Murphy's there? Just in case, you know, the rain came okay. back. set up and uh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I didn't know this was it. I'm glad this, it is. This is All it. Right. What's, your, what's your name? Funny Man. Oh, Funny Man. All right, yeah. Funny Man. It wasn't long after that that the steady stream of performers started showing up, including the Lion Dance team and DLC Magic, our two big acts. The event itself was still very quiet and did not attract a lot of attention. They're just ignoring everything. I don't see anybody getting a whole lot of attention, but I made 30 cents, 50 cents. Some busking is happening, but it's fairly quiet. We only have one one music guy right now. But I think if the steel drum comes back and we get him, we can just establish a atmospheric sound for the area. It'll really, it'll really enhance enhance what's happening. Obviously, once the steel drum goes, it'll start beating. That'll be really, really, really nice. <laughs> Hopefully Trina Hicks will show up with her singing and Bill with the singing. And uh, we've got a guitar guy coming out of the coffee shop shortly on his lunch break, so hopefully we can get a decent audio. <laughs> this morning we were very, oh, very worried. Yeah, I called Jerry this morning. I said, is it still on? It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing. It's coming my way, a season of power and prosperity. Although the weather had apparently persuaded some performers to stay home, we still had close to 20 buskers performing during the height of lunch hour. Once DLC Magic took the stage, things started looking up. People from the lunch hour crowd began to gather and watch the performance. By 12.30, all the buskers who were coming had arrived. The largest crowd gathered to watch the Lion Dance team. The Lion Dance team performance was everything we hoped on every corner could be. Passers-by were recognizing a busking performance as a worthwhile entertainment and stopping to watch a cultural experience being presented to them on the street.
The response to the line dance team and the event in general were resoundingly positive. If we had this type of entertainment or just kind of street entertainment in the square, would it be more appealing to wander through versus what's happening here now? Or about the same. Night. How do you think it went? People enjoy it? Uh, I think we got a great reaction. We had a great time doing it. Okay. It seemed like people had fun. What do you think? Yes, I do. I think what we need to do is bring more attention. We need to draw people in here. We need to let them know things are happening down here to give them reasons to have lunch. Come out and see a little bit of entertainment. Enjoy themselves. See a little bit of culture. This is not just, you know, fly by night. You have some good people doing some interesting things yeah. here. So, you can have a little bit of art in the middle of your lunch. I think it's awesome. I think it's a good thing for the city. You're promoting, you know, street performers that come out and promoting culture. Very good idea. But how did you hear about it? Yeah, how did you find out about the project? Um, I got an email from the Ground Zero. Have you, have you seen many, many buskers around outside of... Just random things here and there. Never like... I never see a huge... If there, if there was a park such as Market Square, for instance, that had entertainment on a daily basis, would be something that you would check out and maybe Definitely. enjoy? Definitely. I mean, it's great with kids, too, you know? Um, actually, I was passing back from school and saw the stuff. And oh, cool, man. Yeah, one of our... Art Institute? Or? Yeah, I go to the Art Institute. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what, what kind of stuff did you see today? Um, saw the juggler, uh, most of the musical performers. Okay. Um, funny man. He's an awesome guy. Very nice person. He's the funny man? Yeah, he is. Um, so, oh yeah, the uh, the line dance was you actually line, very interesting. What did you think of lines? Um, that is actually really cool. I actually got the flyers. I'm going to be checking out the school, cool. the academy. They're they're good people. Awesome. Do you normally come through? Oh yeah, I pass through here. What do you, what do you normally see? Um, actually, um, not this much life. Not okay. um, mostly just people sitting around. Uh, a lot of pigeons. Right. A lot of, a lot of pigeons, but uh, not not too many uh, cool stuff like this. Nothing that'll make you stop and want to stay. Okay. Nothing that'll make you uh, interact, meet new people, and uh, that's pretty much like cool. what's been where, happening where all day from? today. I'm from Massachusetts, actually. Okay. Have you, ever, have you seen busking before? No, no. There's nothing like this back home. Uh, how, how, how do you think it went here in the square today? It was pretty cool. Okay. This is. It was like nice crowd, people passing through. It was the best a good time to have it. Very good. You think the, the crowd got it? They they were cat pretty Definitely. pretty in, in, yeah, we, enjoyed. We got good response, so that's, I got a tip. So. Hey, there you go. <laughs> you, so you were you were officially busking. Cool. Then. All you had to do is pa pass a line, head around, and it yeah, filled yeah, full yeah. with money. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys, for for, oh, for seriously you. doing it, and uh, we'll keep you posted on okay. you know when it's when it's up and coming. All right. Uh, Thanks, guys. Peace. Come on. The buskers themselves took advantage of having other talented people around. We witnessed some collaborations and heard about some potential future collaborations between the groups. As the lunch crowd dissipated, several of the smaller performances took turns performing near the stage area, and Market Square eventually returned to the status quo that existed before On Every Corner was in full swing. Just as we were leaving, a light drizzle began to fall. It is now 3.35, so the rain stopped from 11 till 3. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Which is exactly what the event time was. 11 to, to 3. I think the, the most amazing thing about it was <clears throat> once the busker started performing, the panhandlers just kind of disappeared. The event did not go well financially for every busker. I'm going to lose about 20 bucks to do it. It's so <laughs> but this again goes to show the perception that most buskers have to contend with. A lion dance, a magic act, and even a juggler were easily recognized as performing arts. While the value of a man with a guitar and harmonica still seem to go unrecognized. Making this documentary, we discovered that busking, like any other performing art, can add so much to a city. The appearance of buskers on the street seems to be a good barometer to measure the vibrance of the area. Anywhere you can find a lot of people walking the streets, you will undoubtedly find buskers. Whether they are there to get exposure for their talents, to put food on the table, or just enjoy the unique experience of delivering art and entertainment to the public, Buskers are out there, making your streets a more vibrant place to be. I would like to see Wardcast come out and play 
better musicians that play on the street, right. I think the better, you know, the more people will kind of get it. All these different groups, the new arrivals to Pittsburgh from different cultures, or, or even just from different parts of the United States where where things are a little bit different, help help contribute and stimulate um, the culture in Pittsburgh and stimulate growth both in the economy and change and growth in the neighborhoods and, and keep it lively and vibrant. And I, as a matter of fact, I think that uh, Pittsburgh is much more vibrant now than it was before thanks to these efforts to bring arts into our community. Well, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's, it makes your cities uh, wonderful places to be. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, some people, you know, do try to feed themselves from playing music on the street. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's a medium that is fresh. It's direct. Um, you know, there's a lot of work going around and playing it. You know, lot, I don't want to play in bars anymore. I don't want to be out at 2 a.m. And smelling like smoke, where people are don't ask, don't listen to you. They're half crocked, and then they play free bird, you know. And you're on a six-string, you know, <laughs> acoustic guitar. I mean, it's it's bringing art. It's the best way to bring art to your kids who are losing uh, art uh, funding in their schools. You know, when I first saw my first bus go was in New Orleans, I was like, look at those guys. They're doing all that, and they don't have to work in a you know with a, with a suit on. That's pretty cool, you know. And it made a big impression on me. We just didn't wake up one day and come out here to do this. A lot of thought, a lot of time. There's a, a lot, lot of, of design in our, our props and what we wear. and A lot of thought goes into it and this is how we make our living. To me, busking is a cultural exchange. The, the, the music is the interaction mm. with the people. What's the most positive thing uh, about oh, that? Shit. The most positive thing? Is there a positive thing? Oh, there are lots of positive things about it. Yeah, the, yeah. the best positive thing is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a um, well, environment that lets the best come to the top and lets the people who have talent be recognized. Uh, uh, and, and it gives a lot of opportunity for people with artistic interests to develop them and to make a little bit of money doing it. Yeah. I was talking to a fellow just the other day. He had me sitting on the edge of my seat. He said, if God didn't mean for us to be animals, he sure in the hell wouldn't have made them out of meat.